Hey, it's Chris. I'm back from WWDC. It feels kind of weird to be here in the studio again because it's been a long time, but I'm back. There's no mic shadow on my face this time, so kind of hitting on all cylinders. Uh, WWDC was amazing. One of my favorite things is just being able to hang out with people that you only see at these events, right? So that stuff is like an extra highlight on top of all the announcements. So excited, lots of content coming. But among all the cool stuff that I got to see and do out there, Visiting the Apple Park Visitor Center was one of the highlights. I mean, it was so cool. This is like my Disneyland. Maybe it's yours too. If you're an Apple fan, it's so worth going here. Several people had requested that I do like a tour video of the Apple Park Visitor Center, the stuff that you can see as a visitor out there. So I did do that, and that is this video. And I also went to One Infinite Loop, which is the old campus, and saw what you could see as a visitor there as well. And I'm really excited to show you guys everything that I found. I know not everybody is going to be able to get over there to California to this area and check it out in person. So I tried my best to be thorough and show off all the little details and tell you everything that I noticed. So can you actually go onto Apple's campus, the new Circle, the spaceship, and walk around and check it out? Well, no, you can't. So Apple's website actually describes the place that you can go, the visitor center, as an architectural extension of the private campus. So basically, they're giving you a taste of the campus, but you can't actually get in there and check it out. So let me first tell you about that visitor center, and then we'll get to what it's like to go to One Infinite Loop. So the official visitor center is literally right across the street from the Apple campus, from the circle, from the spaceship. And so when you get dropped off from the Uber or however you got there, you don't really have a very good view of it. You can't really take it all in. There's a little bit of a better view, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second, but yeah, you don't really get to see it. So the street out front is really just kind of a normal street. There's a lot of trees. That's mostly what's blocking your view of the spaceship. Lots of cars going by. I mean, if you didn't know what you were looking for, you wouldn't even realize that the Apple Park was right behind. So I actually went here twice while I was out here in San Jose for Dub Dub. I went before Dub Dub and I went after. One time it was really crowded, lots of people. And the second time in the morning, like before it opened and right when it opened, there was hardly anybody there. It was just me and the employees, which was pretty cool. It's cool both ways. But if you don't want a lot of people to be there, then go early. But what's really cool, I realize if you go there early is you're surrounded by all the Apple employees going into work from the underground parking or wherever they're coming from, just streaming past you. And it's kind of a cool experience because you realize it sort of humanizes the company. You always see the executives. You always see Tim Cook and Craig and whoever else, but to see all these people who you don't know, right, going in to work on these products that you use and love, it just, it really helps you connect with what Apple is and how it works. Once you arrive at the visitor center, something you notice immediately is this is not a normal patch of the planet. Like this little piece of earth that you're standing on is a well thought out, highly designed area. There's so much attention to detail paid to every little thing. Everywhere you look, like somebody put extra thought into that. Like what are some examples of the design? Like the elevator buttons inside, or the lights in the parking lot, or the cement blocks, like what stops you when you park your car. Those things had all been designed especially for Apple Park. There's some like beautiful benches all over where you can sit that aren't just normal benches. And Apple's huge with accessibility, right? Well, there's no button to press to go in and make the doors open for you. There's a thing where you just wave your hand and the doors open for you. Like even that was redesigned. There's these stairs that I heard were designed by Johnny Ive, which are amazing. And there's kind of the main sign where everyone's sitting there taking a selfie and that looks really cool. And I noticed when I look closer, there's like a speaker in there, but nothing was coming out. So I don't know what that was for but designed, everything there is just custom made, it feels like. And the building itself, obviously, is pretty awe-inspiring. It just looks like the whole thing is held up by nothing but glass. It's just glass all the way around. Kind of like some Apple stores that you've seen, maybe like the Chicago one kind of comes to mind. But when you're there, you just kind of feel like it's a thoughtful, well-designed, 
relaxing, at least to me, unique place. Something I noticed about that all glass design though, is that it makes it really feel like there is no separation from the inside and the outside. When you're inside, you're looking outside and you're seeing all the amazing landscaping and stuff. And when you're outside, you can see right in. It's really cool how there is technically a barrier, but it doesn't feel like it or really look like it. All around the building, everywhere you look, even out by the parking lot a little bit, there's all these really great olive trees. And the color and the bark and everything, it really just adds a lot to the atmosphere before you even get inside the actual Apple store. And there's some really nice tables and chairs out there where you could just park and take it all in or maybe do a little bit of work. So that just stuns you right off the bat before you're even inside the building. I will say that the whole visitor center building is smaller than I kind of imagined. I imagined it being like four times the size that it was. That said, it's not small. It's not tiny by any means, but you know, it's just smaller than I expected. So inside, there are four main things for you to look at, four areas or four things to do. There's a cafe, there's a store, there's an AR experience, like an augmented reality campus experience, and then there's a rooftop terrace. So let me tell you about each of those. First of all, I gotta tell you about the cafe. Why? Because they serve nitro coffee and it's good nitro coffee. They also have some other stuff, uh, like other coffee drinks. And as far as snacks, I think there was like some chocolate stuff. I don't know. I didn't really pay attention to that because nitro coffee. Interestingly enough, my coffee, when it was served, when I went to get a straw, I felt like the straw and the cup combo was the most unapple like thing about the whole experience. It was like one thing that felt a little bit out of place, which was uncharacteristic of the entire experience because everything is so well thought out. Well, I had a tiny little cup of coffee and a giant straw and it just didn't seem to go together. So if they see this, maybe they're gonna get some smaller straws for those nitros. It's better without the straw anyways, like just drink it straight out and get the foam. Oh, it's so good. So there's several tables in there where you can sit down and do some actual work. A lot of people are in there on their computers, like looks like doing coffee shop type of work. It was really crowded when I was there the first time. And so I just asked somebody who was sitting by themselves like, hey, do you mind if I sit here for a minute? And it was cool because of all the people, they turned out to be someone who was already subscribed to the channel. Uh, so that was great. I met so many subscribers out here. That was honestly one of the coolest things. I did test the Wi-Fi while I was there. There was two networks. One was Apple Wi-Fi, one was Apple Store. So I jumped on Apple Store and it was 150 megs. So obviously it's not like a gig, but it was plenty fast to do any kind of work that you're gonna do. It's really nice to be able to grab a coffee or whatever and sit at these tables and just kind of watch the outer world and see those olive trees. I found it very peaceful and relaxing and fun. I wish I could have stayed there a lot longer. So then if you go either way around the coffee bar, you can go through into the store, the Apple store, and it's just like a regular Apple store, except there's no Genius Bar. So you can buy stuff, but you don't come here to get like help or, or fixes or anything. And there's a special section that has some merch that you can only get at this visitor center. And there's like t-shirts, there's a pack of cards that I got. Um, there's just some unique stuff that you can't get anywhere else. You can't get it online either, for instance. And the other Apple store that you wanna visit if you ever come out here is over at One Infinite Loop, the old headquarters, and they have their own batch of like shirts and some other stuff, which I'll show you in a second when I talk about that, that you can't get anywhere else, including at this store. The two stores even have a few different things that are exclusives. So I got several shirts. I got some from each place, but I'll just talk about them now. Um, I got one that was an icons shirt. That's the shirt that I'm wearing right now. It has little icons on it, um, kind of like pixelated icons. There's an apple with a bite out of it. There's a hand, there's a speaker, there's a spray can, there's a bomb. There's an old Mac. I also got one from each place that had the address. And when I bought it, I thought that the address was on the front. It's actually on the back. So one says Infinite Loop, California 95014. And the other one says Apple Park, California 95014. I will say I got all large shirts and those two fit me the best with the address a little bit longer. Some of the other ones were larges also. And they seemed a little bit like shorter, like almost more of a medium. So that's something to keep in mind. When you go there, I hope you get the right size because I would hate for you to come from Japan and buy one shirt and then you got back and was like, 
Oh, well, that didn't really fit. I also got an AirPods shirt. It was sort of like a wireframe with all these different colors. That was really cool. They had some other ones there too, different Apple products like an iPod, for instance, with the same kind of wireframe look. And the last shirt I got was just the Apple Park kind of circle outline. That one was the one that really felt too small. But the shirts are all displayed where you can see the design and then underneath them, they're all in these boxes, right? <laughs> Even the shirts are packaged up and they actually cost 40 bucks each. I was a little bit sticker shocked when I saw that, but it kind of makes sense. It's something that you can only get here and people are going nuts for them. It was by far the most crowded part in the store, I felt like, and everywhere that I went, everyone that I talked to around WWDC was talking about these shirts from both the different places. Like, oh, which ones did you get? I also got a hat. They had black, they had white. I got the white one. It's really plain, but there is an apple on the side. Very understated, minimalistic, and true apple fashion. So I like that. It's a one size fits most. And like I said, I got some Apple cards. Those are pretty cool. They're really colorful and they just have different uh, Apple product designs on those. Very neat. One thing I'm gonna say about the staff at this store and the other one, they're so friendly, like ridiculously friendly. There's plenty of friendly Apple staff at just a regular Apple store, like my local one, um, but not always. Sometimes they're cranky, they're people too. But here, it was like they were all super human friendly. So friendly that it was like almost ridiculous. I liked it, I enjoyed it. Um, she was like happy when I was checking out to t help me take a picture in the store. Sometimes I can't even take a picture in a regular Apple store, right? I was told to put my camera away in a different Apple store just like a few months ago, but here they were like happy to take my picture. It was just, they're awesome. So the store is sort of in the middle of this complex. If you go around the sides uh, again, left or right, then you go over to the other side of the building and that's where there's an AR campus experience. So you can't get into the actual campus. This is sort of like the closest you can get. There's kind of a white table or layout with a big circle in it representing the Apple store and some other buildings and fixtures. And the staff is walking around with special iPads that you can see here. And there's a program running that you can point at the buildings and it overlays like the trees and the plants and you can lift off the roof of the main building and look inside and see what the design's like. And then it will show you like the airflow and the solar system for the solar panels. So it was cool, I'm not gonna lie. It was a little bit hard to balance that with my coffee, <laughs> which I was still hanging on to. But at the same time, if I had to rank everything, this wasn't like my favorite thing because it can only tell you so much. It's really not like actually going over and experiencing the spaceship. And you never know who you're gonna run into over here, which is cool too, especially when there's an event going on like this. So when you've seen everything there is to see on the bottom floor, the cafe, the store, and the AR experience, then you can head upstairs. There's an elevator or the stairs, both cool. I told you about the elevator buttons and the Johnny Ive staircase design. When you get up, there's a rooftop terrace with some more tables and it's lined with wood. And I'm pretty sure when I was up there by myself, I could smell the floor. I don't know why. I was smelling like a wood smell. I don't know if they treat it or keep it nice. The whole place is in immaculate condition. When I was there before they were opening up that day at like nine, someone was going around cleaning all the windows. I mean, they keep it in great shape. Anyways, the rooftop terrace, that's where everybody goes to get a selfie uh, with the spaceship behind. Now, still, it's a better view than what you get down on the street, but not that much better. You can see more of the building, but it's still pretty obscured by, I think, some purposefully planted trees, I'm guessing. Or if they weren't planted there on purpose, I mean, Apple didn't take them down. We'll put it that way. So yeah, I grabbed the obligatory selfie, and that was very crowded when I was there uh, in the afternoon or at night when everybody was there kind of an hour before close. The day that I went early, nobody was there. I mean, I basically had the entire complex to myself, it felt like. When I got there early that one morning and I saw all the Apple employees going across the street, I decided to go over there and see where they were going. And what I found was there's a really cool gate. I mean, even the gate, the entrance to get into the campus, which I'd never see anybody talk about, this was news to me, is super well designed. It's kind of a big glass enclosure with an actual gate on the side and there's like a security guy and inside the glass enclosure, which I didn't get a close up of, sorry, I should have. There's like four Apple employees with some iMacs. And I think they're there to probably just check people in, I don't know. But that looks just as cool as the visitor center does. I mean, even the gate to this place. When I was crossing the street, I thought, hey, I should talk to an Apple employee. And there's a guy right here, I was like, oh, hey, do you work at Apple? And he was like, yeah. 
And then I was like, that's cool. Like, what do you do? And he said, hardware. And then he looked down and saw that I had a camera right here <laughs> on my backpack. And I think I scared him or something. Or he thought I was like a spy. And he literally like took off running um, across to get in the gate. So I hope I didn't ruin his day or anything. Um, I don't think he liked the camera. I just was interested in talking to a real live employee that was going in there, so. And by the way, several employees were walking past. Some of them were super nice. Like they saw the camera there and they're like, do you mind if we walk by? Obviously on the way to work, I'm like, yeah, please be my guest, you know, super polite. Um, others uh, were less so, some didn't wanna talk at all. You could see no eye contact. Um, some were really cocky, <laughs> you could tell. Um, but it was cool to be able to see the people that work in the building. That is the Apple Park Visitor Center, but I also went over to One Infinite Loop, and this one, while well, the Apple Park Visitor Center was very cool, I mean like super cool. When I pulled up and saw One Infinite Loop, that main building there where the main entrance is, that actually surprisingly made me a little bit emotional. Like I guess I have some kind of emotional attachment to this area or the brand or, you know, if you read the Steve Jobs book, you know everything was happening right here and all these main characters were playing out their story right here and you see it in like the movies and you see pictures of it. I don't know, something about it was sort of like getting getting to me a little bit. It's crazy, by the way, that a brand, a brand can do that. I mean, this is the place where they invented the iPhone, right? And Steve Jobs used to pull up and I even saw the handicap spots where apparently he would park sometimes. And the employees inside were like, oh yeah. Sometimes you would see Johnny Ives Rolls Royce pulled up and parked out front. I mean, this is where all these things have happened and it was just cool to see. So when you pull up, there's a sign and it's a big green one and there's a lot of people here too. And I was gonna take a selfie, but then one of the employees out there was like, oh hey, do you want me to get your picture? So again, very awesome, very nice, super helpful. I was like, yeah, sure, and he took several pictures. He took one right here, and he was like, okay, now come over here, this is a good shot too. And so, cool, I got some shots that I wouldn't have got if it hadn't have been for them. Now the store is off to the right of that sign, kinda in the bottom, it's more of like a strip, and there's a lot less to do here. There's no cafe, um, no terrace, uh, no AR experience, it's just this store. But they do have their own exclusive merch here that even the other store doesn't. That means a couple of shirts that are unique and over on the other side of the store, they've got like some stationary stuff. There's some pens, like Apple pens, I think. Maybe they're pencils, ha, <laughs> pencils. Uh, and then above that, there are some mugs, like three different mug designs. There's some swell water bottles. I wanted one really badly, but I already have a swell. Like this white swell bottle looks so good. I've just put it on set or something here. But I have a swell, I never use it right now anyways. So, uh. Above that, there's also some sketchbooks that are just blank, but they have the Apple logo on the outside. So there is some cool, unique stuff at this location that you would miss if you only went to the visitor center. Overall, I really wish I could have spent more time here. Uh, I was very time constrained. In fact, shooting this video for you guys meant that I couldn't really see it all for myself when I was there. In fact, when I was watching the footage, I felt like I was seeing some of it for the first time almost, because um, it was just that busy and hectic, um, but it's so cool. It was really a worthwhile experience for somebody like me who loves Apple's products and has for a long time to be able to go and take in the atmosphere, be in Cupertino, where you just see on the back of the box, designed by Apple and Cupertino, it was cool to be there and to see some real Apple employees and to experience this extension of the campus, at least get a taste of it, to have some amazing nitro. There's good coffee and then there's great coffee and there's bad coffee, I don't even touch that. This was great coffee, it really was good. If you're serious about your Apple stuff, I mean, is it worth it to go just for this? Uh, I don't know, that's hard to say, maybe, but you know, you're gonna run out of stuff to do pretty quickly. It's really just kind of go, grab the coffee, check out the store, maybe get a t-shirt, check out the AR, take in the rooftop view, head over to the other store, get a shirt. It's not gonna take you very long. So to plan a whole trip around it may not be worth it um, unless you're a super, super, super fan, which I understand if you are. But it's absolutely something worth seeing if you're anywhere close, for sure. And if you can't ever get over there because you live on the other side of the world or something, it's just never gonna happen, then hopefully this video did a decent job of kind of showing you what's around. Anyways, I could ramble on forever, but thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave me your comments and questions down below. I'll try to answer some of those. And don't forget, you can follow at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K -K, on Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you subscribe with that bell icon turned on because I got a lot of great 
uh, WWDC uh, beta related content coming out very soon. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.